Hi everyone, in this video, I'll share a little bit more about savings plans. So who is it used for and why should you have savings plans and or why should you not have savings plans? So generally, the idea here is that if you need some certainty of a certain amount of money, then maybe savings plans can be for you. So the idea here, if I put it into algebraic terms, uh, you need X amount of money by Y number of years. So for savings plans, um, first of all, we have endowments. And this is basically a huge lump sum payout with a fixed maturity date. Meaning you put 10 years, you wait maybe 10 years, and then 20 years later down the road, you get a lump sum of money, right? And you can choose the premium paying terms as well. So for um, another type of policy will be flexible cash, in which when you contribute premiums, you can also have the option of taking out some money. However, do take note that there are some differences and you know not all the time that flexible cash is wonderful because with more flexibility, with more liquidity, you are charged for a higher fee or you know having a lower yield. So you know how does endowment work in a visual sense? You contribute all your premiums, all right, and at a certain age, you do get a lump sum payout. However, for flexible cash or payout, assuming the same amount of premiums, you can choose to withdraw this amount of money, all right, maybe about 30% of what you have put in. And later on, right, when you claim the amount of money, it will be way less than what it would have been compared to an endowment. So overall, okay, um, all of these savings plans, they use participating funds. How does a participating fund work? They use a smoothing effect for your growth. So like any other investments, maybe about 50% in equities, 50% in bonds. However, on a good year, right, they take out the money, right, some of the returns that you have made, and then on a bad year, they will return it back to you. So for example, if the target growth of the um, savings plan is 4.25%, let's say on a good year, they make 8.25%, they will keep back 4%. In such a year of, you know, let's say um, lower returns, maybe let's say 2%, then they will take out from the 4% they have taken, right, and giving it back to you, um, in about 2% or so, all right? So that is how participating funds work. And it really depends on the management of each insurer. So different insurers have different participating funds. So do look, uh, do keep a lookout for the returns um, when it's published all the world. So they can really, you know, have a good comparison of which insurer um, has better participating fund returns. So um, at the same time, right, uh, usually how these, um, Policies work, they often contain high proportions of zero coupon bonds, and this helps you, you know, or helps the insurer to guarantee you the capital. And that's why, you know, in a high interest rate environment, savings plans tend to be a little bit better than, you know, when without the high interest rate environment. So the third point here is that uh, you can choose to add um, premium waivers. So for all these um, policies, you can even choose to add on um, some sort of assurance. Not really about insurance anymore because uh, nowadays plans have changed. They have removed the insurance portion, but it provides you assurance in a sense that, for example, you know, if you have placed in a thousand dollars and upon, you know, some accidental death or death itself, you can get 105% of what you have put in before, right? And sometimes also, you know, if we are contracted with critical illnesses, then you have the full uh, policy being waived off for the, for the premiums, right? So that is the idea. The fourth point that we have here is that generally they are relatively low, uh, low risk. They are guaranteed returns and they are also non-guaranteed returns. But non-guaranteed returns, usually, you know, they will be achieved right, because um, right now the benchmark is 4.25%. Um, it is pretty hard for any insurer to miss that target, but we will never know. So um, ultimately, these plans, right, these savings plans, they are still considered really very, very low risk. And of course, um, the last one we have here is that premiums have to be fully paid. It cannot stop. The moment you stop, the policy will lapse and it will pay you out your surrender value. So do take note that it is really a forced discipline savings that you cannot control uh, you know, when to stop. 
And for this part is that um, for savings plan, who should use it or what goals should you use it for? In this case, we'll be using it to achieve a goal for a dependent. For example, we have a child and you know he's uh just you know he just came out. He has about 21 years, including NS, to maybe start on his university education. And you know, it really depends whether you want to save for 21 years or 25 years. Sometimes 25 years because we can get a you know um student loan from the university. So you have a longer, you know, savings uh pathway. Whatever that is, you need a certain amount of money by a certain by, by a certain time. And that is when you can use endowment policies. So it really is there to, you know, protect yourself um, or your family members, right? Because they need their money in the future, right? Definitely they need the money in the future. And if you know anything were to happen to you yourself as the contributor to this plan, then this whole plan will be fully paid for and eventually you know, your beneficiaries will benefit from this plan um, in whatever way that they choose to do it, uh, use it for. So for savings plans, um, how do we then compare across the three different types of savings plans? So in endowments alone, okay, we have fixed maturity and no fixed maturity. So meaning that, you know, um, the first case, fixed maturity, you put in 10 years and you say that you want to withdraw in 10 years time, you will have to and must withdraw in 10 years time, right? Whereas for no fixed maturity, after 10 years, you can still leave your money inside. And usually that's where the yield gets higher. Whereas for fixed maturity and withdrawal cash, I idea here is that um, flexible cash, you can, uh, you know, there is this end date of when you must take out a lump sum, but over the course of premium paying years, you can take out some cash. Usually, you know, kind of to sponsor your, your maybe holiday trip, things like that, lah, right? So first of all, we compare the short-term returns, right? As long, what I mean by short-term returns here would be during the um, policy paying period. So for fixed maturity, it will definitely be the highest, okay? Um, why so is because um, you're not taking out money, right? And there's that fixed maturity where they'll give you a maturity benefit, a maturity amount. And that's why the returns are higher. Whereas for no fixed maturity, um, it, ten it tends to be lower, right? Because there is no maturity value, no maturity, maturity amount. But as you leave money inside, there will not be so-called fees anymore. All right, like no more management upon uh, management cost upon um that savings plan. So that's why after the premium paying term, that's when your returns start to skyrocket. However, for um flexible cash, unfortunately, um generally it is a very low return um kind of product because of the flexibility that it allows you. The moment an insurer provides you flexibility, you have the risk of withdrawing the money anytime. What this means is that the insurer cannot use most of the money for investments. And that's why the returns are way lower. So who should use um, these plans? Okay, first of all, fixed maturity. You need X amount of money by Y number of years or for clients who just want to save, all right, and are pretty risk adverse. That's when you will use fixed maturity. Or, you know, let's say individuals who really must force them to save. For example, avid gamblers or you know avid spenders, they do need that habit of saving. And of course, if they don't save, then the whole amount of money is gone, right? Because it laps, then they are forced to continue this plan. And that's how they save their money. So um, for no fixed maturity, usually, right, uh, because of how long it takes to see good yields, it is used for intergenerational wealth where you want to pass on these um, returns to your beneficiaries later on. Or for individuals who you know might be uncertain when they need the money, right? They feel that okay, I don't know if I need the money in 10 years, I'm just saving for the sake of saving. Then you can you know do such a, a no fixed maturity plan where even after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, you can still leave the money in there and the returns grow, grow higher and higher. Like. So for this case, do note that the time horizon can be pretty long because the shortest um, contribution period is about 10 years. 
it usually takes 20 years or more to even see proper returns. Otherwise, you know, might as well just do a fixed maturity plan. And um, for the last one, uh, flexible cash, it is usually used for clients who might not know if they, you know, are able to keep their job or they really need some liquidity at the end, or maybe they have plans to maybe buy a bigger house or have kids, things like that. So they are really uncertain about the future cash flows that they need or, you know, whether can they really contribute the premiums, then they can do flexible cash. So yeah, that's all for savings plans and hope that it has been enriching for you.